In this video, I'll cover some of the basic ideas about understanding electric circuits. I'll go over the terminology you need to be familiar with. We'll talk about how charge moves through an electric circuit. And then I'll talk about the difference about how current flows through a series circuit and a parallel circuit. Memorization is not the major part of learning physics, but you'll need to have confidence that you can distinguish between charge, current, voltage, and power. I recommend making flashcards of these terms, including the definitions and the units. So let's talk about some of the basic ideas when charges move through an electric circuit. If you connect a battery to a light bulb, the light bulb will glow at a steady rate. This is called a direct current, DC, because the charges move in one direction at a steady rate. You can understand this from the repulsive forces between like charges. If an energetic charge flowing out of a battery flows into one end of a wire, it immediately causes other charges to start moving. The battery produces or pumps out energetic charges at a steady rate, so there's a steady rate of current flow. You can think of electric charges as forming an incompressible gas. So if the battery pumps an energetic charge into one end of the wire, then another charge is going to pop out the other end. Students usually have the intuition that something gets used up when electricity flows through a circuit. It's not the current and it's not the charges. If you imagine a bunch of microscopic observers peering into the wire at different points in the circuit and counting the number of charges that move by for every second of time that goes by, every observer would find that the same number of charges flow by per unit time, no matter where they are in the circuit, right coming out of the battery, going into the light bulb, coming out of the light bulb, or flowing back to the battery. Let's take a closer look at the diagram and the cartoons of the electric charges. The diagram shows that energetic charges are flowing out of the battery, these charges have the full potential or full voltage associated with the battery. Since one volt is one joule per coulomb, with a one, one and a half volt battery, each coulomb of charge has one and a half joules of electric potential energy. This is a form of internal energy which is converted into heat and light when the charges flow through the filament of the light bulb. The diagram shows charges with their energy all used up flowing out of the light bulb back toward the battery completing the circuit. So energy, not charge or current, is used up. The next topic is current flow through a series circuit. The diagram on the left shows a single loop circuit with a battery and current flowing through a single resistor. The current is denoted I sub zero or I naught. You can find the current depending on the information given. Let's assume you know the voltage of the battery. Since V equals IR, if you know the resistance, then the current is the voltage of the battery divided by the resistance. On the, on the other hand, let's say you know the power. Since P equals IV, then the current is the power divided by the voltage. In the diagram on the right, there's a similar circuit, but this time there are two resistors in series. Saying that the resistors are in series means that first electrical charge will flow through one resistor and then it flows through the second resistor. There is a single current flow through the entire loop for the same reason that current in the first circuit we discussed with the light bulb and the battery is the same everywhere. Electric charges do not accumulate anywhere in the circuit. With two identical resistors in the circuit on the right, 
the total current through the loop is half what it was when there was only one resistor in the circuit on the left. The next segment about series circuits is more involved than I expect students in my introductory physics class to discuss or calculate on an exam. But I hope this will help you understand why connecting appliances in series is not appropriate for use in household circuits. How does having two resistors in series affect how they work? In the first circuit, the voltage of the battery is applied entirely to the single resistor. The power dissipated is the total current times the battery voltage. In the second circuit, half the voltage of the battery is applied to each resistor, and the current flowing through each resistor is half what it was in the first circuit. So in the second circuit, the power dissipated in each resistor is one quarter of what it would have been in the first circuit. If these are light bulbs, they'll be very dim. If they're another type of appliance, they won't work properly because they won't be getting up enough power. The last section of this video is on how current flows through a parallel circuit. The goal of this is so that you can understand why a appliances are connected in parallel in household circuits. This diagram shows a voltage source connected to two resistors in parallel. In the diagram, the voltage source is a battery which would supply direct current. In real life, this would be your connection to the power company which would supply alternating current. But the principles are the same. There's also a fuse, capital F, in the main line of the circuit and two junctions, A and B, on the top and bottom of the branch leading to the first resistor. Closing the switch in the first branch is the same as turning on the appliance associated with resistor R1. Energetic charges flow out of the battery, through the fuse, and then their energy is dissipated in resistor R1. The charges flow back to the battery and electric charges do not accumulate anywhere in the loop. When you close the switch in the second branch of the circuit, you turn on the appliance that has resistance R2. The current flowing through R2 is the same whether or not R1 is connected because the full voltage of the battery is applied to each resistor. When current flows through two resistors in parallel, the total current from the battery increases. Energetic charges flow out of the battery, through the main line, and through the fuse. At the first junction, A, currents divide. No charges accumulate anywhere, so part of the current flows through R1 and part flows through R2. The currents recombine at the second junction, B, and total current flows back to the battery through the last segment of the main line. You can place the fuse anywhere in the main line. Fuses and circuit breakers are designed to give an open circuit when the, when the current exceeds a rated quantity.